Okay, it looks like the, all the attendees have joined and welcome again. I'm Nathaniel Chip Pierce to Efficient Use of Snapping and Altium Designer. I'll be conducting this webinar for about the next 20, 25 minutes or so and then answer some questions, okay? But please use the question and answer panel to present any questions you may have and not the chat window. And this way all teams R and D team can uh, examine all those uh, Q and A questions that you may present. All right, and please wait until the end of the demo until you present any questions because, well, I may answer those questions uh, within the time of the demo. And in fact, I'm gonna be asking you guys some questions. I'll be presenting three poll questions throughout the uh, webinar just to get your feedback uh, for our R&D and marketing teams, okay? All right, well, let's take a look here and just to see, hey, what is a snap point? All right, a snap point is actually just a point on the PCB with a radius around it that your cursor is going to snap to, all right, when you're within that certain radius, okay? And here's a little bit more detailed, comprehensive ex explanation about this. Now, in fact, you'll see that there are uh, several different snap levels that we're going to examine here and in, in our webinar coming up here, in fact. And just at a high level, let's take a look at them, okay? So you'll see we're gonna be focusing on snapping in the PCB editor, okay? Snapping in the schematic editor is a snap, in, <laughs> no pun intended, in comparison to the PCB editor. And we have a few different snap levels, right? And of course, snapping is defined right in the properties panel and it only occurs during a movie a move option action okay so you'll see that we have snap to grids and we have polar and regular cartesian grids then we have snap to guides guides are a line or a snap point that you can add in the workspace and you'll also see that we have a snap to object hotspots Okay, as well as axes, we can snap to axes and that works with the objects for snapping list there, okay? All right, so this is gonna lead me into our demo and this is a good time to ask our poll question number one. Okay, and that is how often will you be using custom snapping? So if you could answer those questions and I'll bring open my demo. Okay, so it looks like we've got lots of answers for, for those uh, snapping custom, customizations. Some folks answering that, I appreciate that. Okay, so let's take a look here first. Let's take a look at what we have here for snap to grids. You'll see in the properties panel here, right? Over here in the properties panel, in the snap options, all I've got is snap to grids. You'll see that and everything else is off. You see these shift E options is the shortcut key from the main editing area. These snap options here, all layers, current layer, off. You'll see that, right? Off, when I put it off, it doesn't mean all the snap is off. Snap to grids is independent of those snapping objects. Okay, so let's take a look in this PCB, check it out. I've got a polar grid and a Cartesian grid. Okay, so snapping to grids is related to the grid manager down here. All right, so I've got a custom Cartesian grid made out of lines in the rectangular portion of my board and a polar grid as well on the semicircular area of my board, okay? So let's take a look and why we make that polar grid is so that we can get the part out to the edge of the board. All right, so watch in the main editing area, I'm just gonna issue the move command, mm, okay? So boom, I, I just, when I click to move this, it's gonna hold it by its component center and I'm gonna rotate this and zoom in so that you can see it a little bit more effectively. All right, so I can press shift, shift and spacebar or spacebar to rotate it. I'm just stepping on one degree here, all right? And as I move it, you see it's snapping to the polar grid. Now, a very important consideration here, folks, all right, is the snap distance. See that, snap to distance eight mil? Okay, so that, that is the threshold of when I'm moving this part that it's snapping and rotating right on that grid radian. 
see that? So I'd get it up here into a place that was situated properly towards the edge of the board. All right, and now check this out. I can uncheck snap to grids up here and it's off here. All right, you'll see that this off snapping only affects the object set so that if I wanna grab the designator now and bring it on the board, if I move the part say exactly and swing it over here, it's moving along with it, okay? But now you'll see, now I can move this designator completely independently. You see that? And that, that will work on any one of these designators over here, for example. If I move this part and I rotate it out to the edge of the board, all right, now at this point, I'd wanna snap to the grid on here, right? Okay, and then I could turn it off and bring the designator on the board and rotate it exactly the way that I want. Okay, so that's where snap grids, you can turn it on and off. Okay, and here are a few other options, right? In the grid manager, if you uncheck this comp box, when you go to move that part, that, that grid is gone. All right, similarly, if I just check this box, non-component, the grid is gone. So that's one way to turn on and off the grid right there. All right, so that's how snap to grids can help you as you're moving parts on a polar grid, or I'm just gonna issue the move move command and grab this part. It instantly grabs it by its component reference point, or I could just place it here on the Cartesian grid. But again, you gotta make sure grids is selected in there or else you're not gonna be able to move it on there. Okay, so I grab this part again, and now it's just snapping to the grid, as you can see all around there, okay? And if I wanted to move the silk screen here, this text, all right, I could uncheck grids and then move it wherever I want here, okay? And there you have it, okay? So that's moving parts on a Cartesian using the grids, and it's gotta be enabled. Now, if you have it off down here, remember, you turn grids on, it'll snap to grids. You see, it shows off but you move that part, it's definitely snapping the grid. See that? Okay, let's see a couple of other practical applications, all right, of snapping the grid. All right, I'm just gonna uh, close this PCB and not save any of the changes I may have inadvertently made there. All right, and check out this PCB library. What should I'm gonna do here? <clears throat> you see, just I have to have pad centers selected here, okay? so that I can snap to the pad centers and measure the distance. Now, if you're ever making a footprint uh, from scratch, right, you're gonna look at a data sheet and observe the land pattern and, and check out the distance center to center between the pads. And then what you can do, watch this, is set your snap grid, break this chain between step X and Y and set it equal to the center to center pad distance from your land pattern on your data sheet. So that now if I make a new blank component, new blank footprint, that those are gonna be, that's the separation between the pads right there. I'm gonna right click clear filter, place pad, and you'll see I'm gonna hit the tab key to pause the placement processor and set the designator to one. And now you just place the pads on grid. And there you have it. And now I know my pad center to center distance is exactly correct. All right, so that's one way to really help yourself out, setting the global board snap grid equal to the center to center distance between your pads. All right, so there's a great practical application there for snap to grid just when you're placing pads. Okay, All right, so hopefully that helps you out there at that point. And now it's a good time here to launch poll question number two, because I'm gonna show you uh, coming up now on how to snap to guides, okay? So let's take a look at poll question number two here. Is it convenient to use snapping? Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the semicircular PCB here and show you now how to snap guides. All right, now this is gonna work with the guide manager down here where I've added a bunch of colorful guides in here. 
And in fact, what I'm going to do here is turn off the grids here for a moment so that you'll be able to see this more effectively. Those boxes right there. And you see these colorful lines are the guides. And I can enable them and disable them here, right in properties. And again, it's the snap distance back up here, right? Turning off and uh, collapsing the grids now. Look at the snap distance. I'm going to jump this up to 50 mil. Okay, and now you'll see, look, snap to off is here, but that relates to objects for snapping. These objects in here, right? Okay, see, I'm still now, I'm gonna snap to guides, not grids. So now when I get within 50 mil snap distance of moving this part, and I'm just gonna issue the move command, bang, you see how it snaps to that grid? And of course I can use shift and spacebar and spacebar to rotate. Bang, with I get 50 mils, it's just going to be right on that grid. Boom. There it is. See that? It's within 50 mil. Boom. It just snaps over to that grid. Okay, so I could just click to place that down if I wanted to. Now, also, look at this. Sometimes you'll have a snap point. I'm going to quickly jump to that location, JL1000, tab 1000, and because I made a snap point there. If I zoom in, I'll see this fuchsia colored, I believe that's fuchsia snap point. And again, now I'm gonna increase my snap distance even more to 100 mils and move one of these components here and get it close to the snap point. And let me zoom in. And you'll see that once I get within a zoom threshold here, let me pop back out, you see, bang. It's gonna go right into that snap point. Let me get my auto panning and zoom right into the center. You see C5, bang. It's just gonna grab right to that snap point. Because sometimes, you know, you might wanna, you might have a very specific location that you have to place a, a part on. All right, so let's take a look at another practical application of that. All right, I'm just gonna close this PCB again and not change any uh, thing that I might have uh, set up there. And go back over to this PCB, check this out. You see, this connector <clears throat> typically would have to be placed at a very specific XY location. So in 2D, for example, I could set a snap point. Once again, using the guide manager, add snap point, specify its location. All right, XY location, All right, hit enter. And now if I zoom in closely, I can see the snap point right in here. And there's a snap distance, right? I've got to change that snap distance. I'm going to put it way up for display purposes to 100 mil. That now when I grab this footprint, boom, it just is going to grab right to that guide right in there. You see, I've got, but I've got to enable guides. It didn't do it. All right, watch this. You see, now it'll do it. Boom. When I get right within that snap point, that's fine. And now in 3D, I see that it's exactly where it should be, okay? I can rotate this and take a quick look at it here. You see how, how that looks there now? Beautiful. The snap points can help you, right? In 3D and zero rotation. So placing footprints on the board, right there can help you because a lot of times footprints will have to be placed at very specific X, Y locations and rotations, okay? All right, so let's uh, see if we've got, we got another uh, poll question here as well. <clears throat> Thank you guys for answering those poll questions. Let's take another look at some practical application of snapping to guides as we saw in the circular P PCB or snapping footprints in the PCB. Or look at this, in a PCB library. Look at this, they've got some custom snap points in here, all right, for this particular footprint that's been placed. All right, they've got a snap point here, and they've also got another custom snap point here. Let me show you how to make custom snap points here, because look, on this particular footprint, what they've done here, let me, is they've got a lead that goes up the side. They've got three leads. One goes up the side, and look at this. Two of the leads just go right up against the bottom of this uh, connector. <clears throat> so watch this. I'm just going to go to zero rotation and grab that footprint and delete it. <clears throat> 
And let me show you how to place it in the main editing area here. Place 3D body. I'm going to grab this power jack and click open. Now, typically what I would do here is I would hit tab, pause the placement process and set the rotation X, Y, and Z so that the footprint step model is flush to the 2D footprint here. Okay, so I'm just going to drop it down there. Okay, and let's take a look here. I'm going to select this footprint, give it an override color and an opacity of 50% so that we can see through it a little bit. And watch what I'm going to do here. You see, if I can make a, sna a custom snap point, the midpoint between where this um, lead goes up against the center is up against the 2D footprint pad, then I'd be able to orient that properly. So watch this, tools, 3D body placement, add snap points from vertices. See, you can do it in 3D right here. So watch this, along the status bar at the bottom, it says pick the step model to add snap points to. So I click anywhere on that step model, and now it says pick the vertex where it will be attached. But watch this, if I hit the tilde key, that brings up shortcuts that I can use. Look at this, switch between single vertex and midpoint mode, okay? Because I wanna grab this right in the midpoint. I want a snap point right there and I've got it. But you've gotta have snap points enabled for visibility in view configuration. You see this 3D custom snap points, I've got it visible. All right, so now in the main editing area here, I'm gonna back up hit zero to get zero rotation. And again, watch this, back in properties, the snap distance, I've got it set to 50 mil. So that when I grab this part, it's grabbing it by the snap point and it's gonna snap to the pad center, boom, within 50 mil, because I've got pad center is also enabled in here and 3D body snap points, both using 50 mil snap distance. And now that I've got that footprint placed, well, let's take a look at it. In orthogonal rotation, there it is. Okay, I can rotate it here at the bottom and take a look here and I see those leads are going right where they should. All right, that is perfect right in there, okay? I can rotate that through, take a look at it. All right, and zero rotation at the end, flip the footprint and view fit all objects. Okay, so that's how you can add a custom footprint to a step model that you import into a footprint and you'll just see it in 2D that it's snapping right there to that reference point, dead on target, okay? All right, so those are some good applications there, okay? So I'm just gonna close all documents and save none and open up that circular PCB again. There's a really helpful thing here. I'm gonna show you again in here. All right, because now, all right, well, I'm gonna, now the snap to axes, all right, works with these objects for snapping down here. All right, and we saw the slide how you can use those axes as a placement guide, but it's not really quite as helpful as these options here. Snap to grids here and guides, that works completely independently of these objects for snapping, right? And again, so I'm gonna go to current layer, check this out. All right, and this time I'm gonna turn everything off, except now I'm gonna show you some object snapping here. All of these options here are off. And watch this, I'm just gonna go to tracks, arcs, lines, and turn off vertices. This is the only thing I've got open now. All right, so watch this, I'm gonna zoom in. Okay, and in fact, it might be helpful to uh, turn off the uh, grids here. All right, so as I move the component, they'll turn off. Watch this, MM, move, move, and I just grab C6. All right, but I wanna, I, I'm gonna place that down there and set my snap distance up again to 50 mils so that you'll see a more dramatic result here. See what I'm gonna do here, here's a, here's a track, right? That's making up the uh, outline of the PCB and here's an arc, that semicircular part of the PCB. All right, so now when I've got my, my snap option set just to tracks, arcs and lines in here, under objects for snapping, right? You'll see right in here, right? 
objects for snapping. Now when I move this part, mm move command, watch when I get within 50 mil, bang, but it's only saying current layer. See, I'm on the top layer, so it's not snapping there. I'm gonna hit control shift mouse wheel to scroll down to the M1 PCB outline layer. Now you see it when it gets within 50 mil. In fact, let's make it 100 so you may see it even better. All right, so watch, I go to move this part. Bang, it snapped into the arc or the track down here. You see that? And again, I could use uh, space bar or shift in space bar to get the rotation set wherever I want on there. All right, I've got my rotation step set to one degree. And look at this, auto panning kicks in. And you see right now there's my snap to the arc all the way down to the line where, where it joins. Now here's another object for snapping option. Look at this, snap to track arcs vertices. Watch this, so now it's not gonna snap to the, uh, to the line, but the joint area where it, it, uh, the intersection of this arc and this track, you see that intersection right there? When I get within 100 mils now, I'm moving this thing, boom, there it is. And that's it. So sometimes that particular snap option can be really helpful. And again, as you're moving the part, of course, I could, you know, hit shift and space bar as I wanted to rotate that any way that I wanted to. Okay. All right. So there you have it. Okay. So there's moving these parts around with those different snap options. Okay. A, a question came in. What are the default snap options and default grid options? Okay. Very good. Uh, let's go, let's create a new PCB, file, new PCB, blank new PCB. All right, I'm going to just fit the whole doc. There's, you know, no template or anything. All right, so let's just take a look in the properties panel and see what we've got. The default snap options for a brand new PCB with, without any uh, template configured are grids, current layer, and these are the snap objects, intersections, pad centers, regions, track arcs and vertices via centers, and importantly, snap distance, eight mil, axis snap range, 200 mil. Okay, um, let's take a look here. Um, some other questions that are coming in. Why would you use snap to guide over snap to grid? All right, just in because snap to guide sometimes, look, you might create a guide just like I've done here. All right, like for example, if you've got a row of LEDs that have to be placed at a very specific XY location, right? Because they might have to shine through an opening in your product enclosure. So that's why you can add a guide right there and it pops out a little bit more than a standard grid, okay? <clears throat> okay. Um, Let's see, another question came in talking about creating an angle, not 90 degree ro rotation, all right? What I was doing just to set the rotation step, just going into preferences on the general page, all right? The default there is 90, but on a polar grid, sometimes I like to set it up for one degree so that I have more control over that rotation. All right, another question came in, why can't I select or snap to any objects in my schematic template? All right, well, this um, webinar is focusing primarily on PCB snapping, but I'll show you that real quick. File, new schematic. It's gonna make a copy of my template schematic here. All right, and this is, I've just replaced the Altium logo with my own company logo and re uh, replaced the Altium company name with my own company name, address, and email, okay? But yes, you'll see that, for example, in the properties panel in the schematic editor, my default is visible grid 100, snap grid 100, but I'm moving my cursor freely until I move an object. You see, now if I go, you see, you're right, I can't select anything in the template. No question about it. You're not supposed to be able to. I'd have to open the source template file to select. And again, in the schematic editor, snap only affects when you're moving an object. So for example, if I go to place wire, okay, now my cursor is snapping to my snap grid. And you'll see on the status bar in the lower left, grid is 100, and that's my actual uh, snap grid, okay? But you'll see it's not snapping to anything in the, um, 
actual title block there, okay? You're right, it's not, it's just snapping to the grid, okay? And you'll see in the grid manager, in, you'll see that there's just a visible grid, all right? There's no actual grid manager in the uh, schematic editor, okay? All right, guys, well, let's take a look here. I think there's just a, I think that's all I've got here for you for demonstration. And once again, I'd like to uh, thank everybody for your questions. All right, our question came in here, is a shortcut key to turn snapping off? Yes, shift E. All right, but that just turns off the snapping, uh, the objects for snapping. If you wanna turn off snap to grids, guides, or axes, you gotta click the button in properties, okay? So there's my demo and webinar for you. I hope you enjoyed it. All right, we'll answer any other questions that come in into the question and answer panel uh, directly, okay, with uh, either text or we'll follow up for you. Again, thank you very much for your attention. And any final questions you might have, feel to put them into the chat window, okay? I see a bunch of them.